Welcome to the Grief in the Workplace webinar. I'm Jessica Philippe from the South Central Regional Library Council, and our presenters for today are Donna George, a Bereavement Services Manager at Hospicare and Palliative Care Services, and Laura Ward, who is a Bereavement Counselor at Hospicare. And they'll be answering questions after their presentation, if you'd like to type them into the chat box. And I want to thank you for joining us, Donna and Laura. So we're going to just get started here, and I just wanted to begin by just saying um, a little bit about what we're going to discuss today. Um, we're going to look at the reasons why this topic is important to address, beginning with the financial burden it places on businesses and the vast numbers of individuals in the workplace impacted by grief and loss. I will be spent discussing what grief is and understanding how grief is manifested, along with looking specifically at three different types of grief and the different styles and ways that grievers tend to express and cope with their loss. We will also focus on providing strategies and tips for dealing with grief in the workplace. This information will be explored from five different perspectives. We're going to look at when the grief is when the griever is the employee, when the griever is a colleague, when you are in the role of a manager or supervisor, when an employee dies, and when a coworker dies. And when we're finished, we would like to give some time for questions and answers. So um, we wanted to start off with this quote uh, because we feel like it uh, will kind of explain itself through the slides as we're talking. Um, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Right? And Maya Angelou was the one who said that. And you know, one thing that you're going to see uh, say in all the categories is that when somebody either, you know, when somebody you know has experienced a, a loss or a death in their life of someone they love, one thing that's really important is to acknowledge that in some way. And I know that, um, you know, we do realize that sometimes it can be uncomfortable to do that. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, and sometimes the acknowledgement can just come from, you know, when the person returns to work saying, I'm sorry for your loss, or, you know, if, if it's an employee who, who dies, you know, acknowledging some way to the family. Uh, we're going to talk about different ways to acknowledge a loss. Um, and also, you know, if all else fails and you don't know what to say, just being present for people is so important to letting them know. Just listening, being there, um, showing your presence in, in small gestures. It doesn't have to be anything big. Um, but people tend to feel very alone in their grief. And um, oftentimes, you know, we hear people talk about, you know, yes, people acknowledged it at the beginning, but then they pretended like it didn't happen. And, you know, grief is, is a long process for people. It, it, uh, goes on much longer than the initial month or two. Um, and, you know, people obviously have to return to work at some point. So there's a good chance that you're, you know, working with someone who is experiencing grief or have worked with someone who's experiencing grief and loss. More than 4 million workers experience the death of a loved one each year. At any given time, approximately 25% of employees are grieving a loss. Just in this last year or so, in our own small agency at Hospice Care, we've had four employees who have lost a significant other. So you can see how prevalent loss is uh, within the workplace. I also wanted to highlight, um, as I was doing some research on this, uh, about a woman who shared that her boss still asked about her husband even years after she became a widow. He would mark down days of her wedding anniversary and the day he passed away. And on those days, he put some chocolate on her desk, or he'd bring her a specialty coffee. And it was nothing extravagant, she said, but it meant a lot. These small gestures, she said, warns him by loyalty for a lifetime. So you can see what the impact is when we in the workplace recognize other people's grief. And why is talking about grief so important in the workplace? It actually costs U.S. businesses more than $74 billion a year. And though we've not listed many of the different types of losses, not all due to the death of a loved one, we, can, we also cannot underestimate the impact that these other losses have in the workplace. For individuals whose pets are like their children, 
they may be experiencing grief in a very intense way. And these, uh, these griefs often can be marginalized and disenfranchised. So just taking a look at the amount of money that is spent because of the uh, grief in the workplace. Again, I want to highlight why this topic is important to discuss. Death is a fact of life, and grief is a necessary part of the healing process. And it's also important to know that we all will be going through this at some point, whether it's an employee who died or a close loved one of an employee. It's important to allow healthy grieving to take place, and that will help contribute to a stronger and more stable work environment. Since many people spend most of their waking hours at work, you know, a lot of grief does go on right in the workplace. Another important aspect about grief is that grief doesn't have a timeline. It's not just a week or two after someone dies. This goes on for a very long time. And because it goes on for a very long time, it's really important for people, have a, people in the workplace to have a better understanding of what grief is and what the signs and symptoms are. Uh, many years ago, after the death of a, of a colleague where I work, our management team brought in an outside therapist to help employees process the loss and the impact that death had on us from both a personal and professional stance. Although this type of support wasn't for everyone, not everybody wanted to gather and talk about their feelings, what this message was is that the management did care about the employees and didn't want to recognize that people needed a space to grieve. So um, something that we often don't really consider or think about until we're grieving ourselves is the impact of grief on so many levels. Grief is the emotional, cognitive, physical, spiritual, and interpersonal response to the experience of loss. And this really is just referencing the fact that, you know, grief is more than just emotions and sadness. Um, you know, when somebody is grieving, we actually have people who exhibit all kinds of physical symptoms, headaches, um, body aches, certainly difficulty sleeping, loss of appetite. Um, on a spiritual level, you know, you have people who are, you know, sometimes angry with God or questioning their spiritual beliefs, um, you know, perhaps even having new spiritual beliefs based on their experience of the loss. Um, you know, oftentimes the question, you know, I wonder what, where the person has gone, and it brings up those, those questions. Um, on a cognitive level, there's how you think about the loss, how you're perceiving it, the changes in your life, and, you know, oftentimes people are very, you know, sensitive to what's going on around them. They feel less tolerant of the world. Um, this can certainly, inter you know, obviously inter interpersonal relationships are impacted by that. Um, you know, there's a sense of like, often people you thought might be there for you aren't able to do so because, um, you know, they're uncomfortable with the loss or what it's bringing up for them. Or, you know, and sometimes it's the people you didn't expect that that are able to be there for you in the way that you need. So there's a lot of feelings about that, you know, positive or negative to various relationships in your life. Um, on a, on a systemic level, when families experience a loss, everybody copes differently. So there's often this sense of, of not really pulling together. I mean, you can have that sense of pulling together, but you know, there's, there's frustration with each other about the different ways people grieve. Um, people feel angry. Sometimes anger is a, more comfortable than, than the sadness. And so there can be a lot of interpersonal problems within families. Certainly there's a lot to work out after somebody dies when it comes to the estate. And that can bring up a lot of, you know, family dynamics and difficult feelings. Um, if someone has experienced a previous loss, their grief can become even more intense and they can be grieving past losses as well as the current loss. Um, so grief really impacts people on all areas and, and levels of their life, including work. Um, but it's important to, to understand how impactful grief is. There isn't in any area of someone's life that it doesn't impact in some way. Um, shape or form. So uh, we also, you know, another reason this topic is important is because everybody has to grieve at some point in time. You're going to go through, a, you're going to go through grief. And um, so whether it be for yourself or, you know, you're, it's highly likely you're going to come into contact with, you know, a coworker or you yourself might be grieving at some point in your life. Um, so Donna is going to talk about different kinds of grief, right? Or, or, or you no, know, actually understanding grief. So um, can you see our screen? 
Cool. Yep, you just want to go back into presenter mode and then. Okay. Perfect. All right. Good? Yes, great. Okay. <laughs> um, apologize. So, um, in terms of understanding grief, uh, you know, one thing that Donna and I always say to people is that, you know, all the, it, it might feel like you're in therapy, but, you know, with therapy, you're trying to fix a problem, and grief is not a problem to be fixed. It's a, a normal and natural response to loss, and there's no timetable for grief. So grief can go on for a long time. If you have lost somebody in your life that you love, you know that there's still times where it will kind of hit you even years later, um, and certainly you don't forget about the person. That person had an impact on your life that, that goes on. Um, everyone grieves in their own way, and we're going to talk about different kinds of grieving. Um, certainly, uh, if you look down at the little graph below, I think that's that pretty much sums it up. You know, we want grief to be over and done, to have a beginning and an end, but it really feels more like um, waves. So, you know, you will maybe feel somewhat okay one day, and and then just kind of feel like you're you're really hit with it another day. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. okay. Uh, in a, an, an analogy that I give people to help them understand what it might be like, too, as well as kind of, you know, you have waves hitting you. And, and it's, you know, unless you've got the waves timed, you don't know when they're going to hit you. You could be in the grocery store and see a cereal box that rem reminds you that the person's favorite cereal and just suddenly the grief hits you and uh, you might start crying in the store. So a lot of times when people are grieving, they don't want to be in public necessarily because they, it's unpredictable. Um, but another analogy is, you know, like when you, and over time, that sack of potatoes does become smaller and smaller till it's like a wallet that you have in your back pocket. It's never not, you know, it's, it's, you're not thinking about it a hundred percent of the time, but it's there with you. Um, and so that's a good way to kind of think about the long-term process of grief. I'm going to highlight three different types of grief. We certainly happened. I can distinctly remember um, <clears throat> sitting out in an area of um, our residence with one of our employees putting their arm around one of our patients as they were watching the Twin Towers going down. And so that's a, just a perfect example of what it's like when there's been a collective grief. Um, another one might be um, the assassinations of JFK or Martin Luther King. Or even more personally, um, when our community felt the losses of um, the Harris family that was murdered. And ways that we can deal with societal loss is give people the time to discuss their concerns, their fears, and their sadness. Um, you find a sense of community as everyone is going through the same thing. Understand that this type of loss will affect workplace productivity on a temporary basis. And in some, play, in some cases, it's important to bring in um, grief counselors. I know I've been called in this several uh, different um, times to go in and support people who've been uh, impacted by a larger uh, loss in the community. Uh, another loss that really can hit in the workplace is the professional grief, which is grief directly associated with one's job. For example, job loss or a colleague losing their job. Uh, downsizing, um, and this can also cause a uh, loss of financial stability. Uh, so it's really important to recognize the different ways that grief can impact the workplace. And not to minimize, obviously, what we're really spending a lot of time talking about is the personal grief. That so uh, grief has impacted in ways when some colleague is going through a divorce, um, has just been diagnosed with a serious illness, um, the loss of a pet, uh, a family member moving out of the area. So these all do impact the workplace. So um, I talked a little bit about grieving styles that I was going to mention that. Um, okay, so can you see it okay? Yep, I can see it. Yeah. Okay, I don't know how much you heard about that, but I was just talking about different types of grief. So we'll go into, um, on one side of the continuum is, is a griever we refer to as instrumental. Instrumental grievers experience and speak of their grief intellectually and physically. They are most comfortable with seeking accurate information, analyzing facts, making informed decisions, and taking action to solve problems. 
Remaining strong, dispassionate, and detached in the face of powerful emotions, they may speak of their grief in an intellectual way, appearing cold and uncaring to others. Um, you know, this is, we don't want to, you know, specific this to gender, but you tend to see more instrumental grieving with men, although certainly women can fall under this category. Um, and people who are very focused on, you know, oftentimes we see people very focused on the details, um, the estate, and that kind of keeps them going. Um, it, there was uh, an article that talked about this man who was, you know, their, their daughter had, had died, and she died in a car accident, and, um, you know, she basically hit the neighbor's fence and, as part of the accident, and so he would listen to his wife inside the house crying and wonder why he couldn't grieve that way um, while he was outside uh, making a new fence for the neighbor. So, you know, that's just a, an example of, of a doer, somebody who's going to be looking at what actions can I do. But that's an expression of their grief as well. So although they might not grieve how you expect them to grieve, they're grieving in their own way. Um, and they are, you know, expressing their feelings, but more through actions. <clears throat> the other style of grieving, which is intuitive, is what we would often expect to see from people, you know. Uh, it's more open expression of emotions. Intuitive grievers experience a full, rich range of emotions in response to grief. Comfortable with strong emotions and tears, they are sensitive to their own feelings and to the feelings of others. Since they feel strong emotions so deeply, they're less able to rationalize and intellectualize the pain of grief and more likely to appear overwhelmed and devastated by it. So when someone's grieving like this, uh, you know, it, it's more along the lines of, you know, what you would expect. And so oftentimes these people will get the kind of response from, from others in the community and their loved ones that, that they need, where instrumental grievers sometimes don't get that response. People wonder why they're grieving this way, um, question, you know, why aren't they more emotional? Um, so, so it often doesn't work for them to get the kind of support they might need. Um, intuitive grievers, you're going to see those people in your support groups. Um, and, you know, they're going to be more likely to access services. I think one thing that I have uh, just seen in our own practice is that uh, we, we do get a lot more uh, men who've never been in therapy before because grief is sometimes something that really, it pushes them past the point of being able to kind of just focus on the actions and be able to get through it. And that, that's kind of scary uh, when, when that's always worked for you as a way of coping and, and suddenly you, you need more support. Um, so they might be surprised to find themselves coming to individual support, more likely than, than even the group because they might not feel as comfortable for other people to see them expressing emotions in that way. But they just feel like, you know, this has just pushed me past the point where I can just, you know, act and not feel, not, not express my feelings, but they aren't necessarily going to be as comfortable with it as the intuitive griever. And again, remember that people can fall anywhere along this continuum. So because grief affects all of us in so many different ways, um, there are many ways to recognizing grief in the workplace. Um, when an employee goes back to work um, who may be uh, going through a loss and have lost someone, they're, they have quite an inability to concentrate. Um, they may be preoccupied with the loss and really just spending a lot of time just going over what just happened to them, how they could have changed the outcome of someone's death, how um, they felt, might have felt responsible for the loss. These thoughts continue to be part of the grieving process and can really impact an employee's ability to concentrate back at the work world. Um, they also may be preoccupied with having so many tasks to do. If it was a spouse that died, they may have a lot going on in their home or needing to settle in a state and going back to work um, and trying to get back into the flow of work with all these extra burdens can really deplete them and give them a very difficult time in trying to stay on task. Um, I know from working with clients um, that come into my office, oftentimes um, they'll come in and they'll you know, talk about their inability to be able to focus. Um, they'll, they'll leave the office and they'll forget their keys. They won't remember that I had just given them their appointment card. So it's, it's very impactful when people are grieving that they really cannot retain and hold on to things. Um, after a death, grievers may no longer feel invested uh, what seemed to be 
work that they enjoyed, they may all of a sudden not feel like, what is the purpose of all this? And not be able to give it their all uh, and the attention that it needs. Um, like Gloria talked about, grief is extremely exhausting. It's exhausting from a physical realm and also an emotional realm. And so when people um, go back to work, they may be going on a lack of sleep. For many people who have been caregivers, they sleep you know, kind of half awake. They want to be able to listen to the person that they're caring for uh, during the night. And so they've gotten into a pattern of not being able to um, sleep through the night. And then they get up in the morning and they haven't been very well rested. And they can go on after the death as well. Um, also, if it's been a spousal loss, people um, that I've worked with have talked about how it's hard to sleep in the same bed, and so they may just sleep down on the couch and not get a good night's rest. So again, you know, going back to work and feeling pretty depleted from going through the grief process along with a literal lack of sleep. Um, there's also a difference between grief and depression. And when someone who may already be taking an antidepressant or have dealt with depression, when they have gone uh, through a loss, uh, that can actually impact how they're grieving too. And that again will amp up these, the symptoms of grief and how they're handling the loss within the workplace. Uh, anger, you know, anger is one of these emotions that many people can identify with when they're grieving. And it can come out in many ways. It can come out sideways or it can come out in people being short-tempered. And that, again, can impact the workplace. Uh, stress, stress levels of those employees that may be taking on an extra workload because the person who has been out because of a loss uh, hasn't been able to really do all their responsibilities. And this can cause tension in, in the workplace, not only for the person that is um, Grieving, but those impacted by the employer employee when they come back to work. So when you're grieving, um, you know we're just going to give you a few tips on kind of things to think about for yourself, uh, ways to manage that. Um, you know most people do have to return to work at some point, um, and when you do that, make sure to let your bosses and colleagues know about your loss. Uh, depending on your relationship with your managers, this might be challenging or even awkward, but it's really important. Um, you don't need to alert everyone that you work with, but it may be helpful to have even managers share, you know, what you're willing to share so that you don't have to tell the story so many times. And also people might understand that you need some more support on the job right now. Um, you know, do realize that not everybody's going to be able to respond to the loss um, in the way that maybe you need or want. Um, some people are just better at that than others in terms of feeling comfortable with um, comforting people who are grieving. Um, you know, definitely there is a sense in society that we that we feel like we need to carry our grief and and you know just kind of hide it. But understand that you know grief is not something isn't something you overcome. It's just something you learn to live with the best you can. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to break down. I mean, you're human. This is a human condition. Grief is a human condition. Everybody will go through it at some point. Um, and you're a human first and a professional second. It can be helpful to identify somebody at work who's kind of a lifeline, somebody you know that you can reach out to and let them know that you may need to reach out to them for support during the day. Um, so just kind of thinking about, you know, ways that you can deal with grief, you know, do realize that you may need to cry at some point and maybe have a place identified in your mind that you can go to uh, to do that, um, where you can take a break and you're not going to be bothered. Uh, those kind of things can be helpful, even just to deal with the anxiety around being back at work. Because a lot of people, like I had said before, you know, don't even want to be in public because they're worried that, you know, they're not going to be able to control it if they need to cry or they get upset. Um, and and that, that is actually the reality, that there may be times where you feel like you can't. Um, one thing that can be helpful, helpful is to learn about the company's bereavement policy and find out if you have time that can be allotted to you and use it. Um, you know, and you might want to check with HR to see if there's an option from working from home occasionally. This can help you ease back into work and minimize any concerns that you have about performing. 
Um, if there are no bereavement policies in place, ask regardless, explain you are grieving and would appreciate a few days off and try to work with your HR department. So just being really upfront about what you need can be helpful. You might not get exactly what you need, but it's certainly worth, worth asking for. Um, the truth is there's really no time after a loss that people feel 100% ready to go back to work. The distraction can be therapeutic and sometimes people do say it's helpful to have something to distract them. Um, ways to create a safe environment, you know, maybe asking for those work opportunities we talked about, working at home, mental health days, um, you know, taking care of yourself outside of the workplace is going to be really important. Um, and you might not even realize what kind of support is out there for you. A lot of people don't realize that hospice care offers community bereavement support. All of our events and our groups are open to the community. We offer six individual support sessions free of charge to people. Um, there may be services in your area that you don't even realize are there. You know, take advantage of those, get, get whatever support you need. And I know it's not for everybody. So also, you know, reaching out to friends and family, people who can support you outside of work. You know, taking care of yourself, making sure to get enough sleep, like doing the things that you do when you're struggling. Uh, we all have those things that we fall back on. You know, what are those for you? And really utilizing them during this time. Um, it can be really, you know, important for you to ask up front for help with workload. You know, just having that open communication with your supervisor, manager, coworkers, if you need more help. I know that that's a hard thing to do, ask for help, and we all tend to think that we just need to push it aside and do our work. But the truth is you're not going to be functioning at 100%, and that's okay. That's understandable. And being up front with that with the people you work with, it's just going to create less anxiety for you, and also it'll be better on your relationships with your coworkers. Um, if there is uh, support through work, that's another option. There may be EAP support, which is uh, an employee program that allows for free sessions for counseling. Take advantage of that. Um, so just kind of thinking about ways to take care of yourself is most important. And also just being gentle with yourself. One of the things that people struggle with the most when they come in to work with us is that they're the worst, they're the harshest judges on their own grief. Um, and I'm not grieving right, or I should be feeling better. And that creates a lot more stress and anxiety for them in an already very difficult situation. So a lot of what we're doing is, is, is normalizing for people. Like, it's normal to be struggling right now. It's normal to be feeling this way. Um, and really encouraging people to, to be gentle and compassionate with themselves. Um, and, and I think probably more than you realize your fellow coworkers and your management want to support you. Uh, they just might not know how to say it or to show it. So now we're going to look at um, how to support a colleague. What do you do when uh, a colleague is grieving? Um, first, you need to acknowledge the person's loss. You know, it's the elephant in the room. You really need to acknowledge that the person did lose someone. Even though you might feel uncomfortable, it's better to acknowledge a loss and to say nothing. That can really make a person feel um, like you don't care when you don't acknowledge what they've just been through. Um, so it's really important not to ignore that person when they return to work. Um, let, let the brave person be your guide. Um, don't assume that you understand because of the way that you grieve that they're going to grieve in that same way. So let them be your guide. You know, do they want to talk about it? Do they want to just kind of stay by themselves? We really need to respect their way of coping and dealing with their grief. You also need to acknowledge that they're going to be, it's going to be different and they're going to be sad and that you can't fix it by knowing that you can be there for them. Listening, listening can be a really instrumental in supporting someone else. Make time just to listen and there might be times in the workplace when it's just a, not in a, uh, the best timing to be able to really be there for uh, a colleague, but you can say, I really do care, and how about if we meet for lunch, or how about if we meet a little bit after work tonight, I really, uh, I know today you were really having a difficult day, and I really want you to know I want to be there for you, so um, being open to be listening, and again, I can't emphasize enough how important it is that it, with grief, we cannot fix it, by recognizing people just know that, that you care. And that is something um, that everyone uh, needs to know. Uh, also, 
how can you help a colleague that is grieving? Well, there are practical ways of helping, too. Can you take over a task, something that they just can't seem to be able to get done in their work day? Um, and maybe something that you can't do, do long term because of your own work responsibilities, but doing uh, you know something that will really lighten their load can be a very helpful way of supporting your um, fellow colleague who is going through grief. And just like what I mentioned earlier on about the um, supervisor that brought in chocolate and coffee on the special days, remembering and maybe just jotting down um, the day that your colleagues a loved one died or their anniversary if they've mentioned it you know keep that in check and then when that day arrives perhaps just acknowledging that uh, you're thinking of them on this uh, important day uh, it's also important to get resources i know people come in here a lot and see us and they just want some articles on how to support a colleague or information about grief and loss information about what we have to offer. And um, just, again, thinking about the timing of this, people might not want to have you just give them a bunch of literature to read or recommend a book, but you can keep that in mind, and when the appropriate time comes up, you can provide, provide them with those resources. Uh, and again, just like Laura had earlier said, uh, when the employee has gone through a loss, um, a colleague can also go and seek out EAP if they need it either for themselves or to get some information on how best to support your colleague in the workplace. I'm going to also now highlight um, a little bit about, I know this goes on a lot, we hear this um, on what people might have said or didn't say, and um, when people are grieving, they are very keen on what people have said or didn't say to them. And so it's it's helpful to have an idea of what might be appropriate or not appropriate to say. Um, I'm sorry to hear about your loss. Again, not saying anything can be really hard. It's not, it's not giving uh, the respect that your colleague needs by acknowledging the loss they went through. Um, hearing, uh, I heard about your loss and I don't know what to say. Um, most of us, even as professionals, we don't always know what the right thing to say. You know, we might walk into the room and say, how are you today, which might seem pretty abrupt to somebody who's grieving, uh, and they may say, what do you think? How do you think I'm doing today? I just lost, you know, and then fill in the blank of who they did lose. And so, uh, again, you know, it's important to, um, to be sensitive to the words that are coming out of our mouth. Um, saying something about, is there anything I can do to help? And then following through with that. You know, people do not want to hear, uh, just give me a call, because they don't know sometimes what they need. But perhaps being um, around them, you may understand uh, their routines, and they may need to, like, for instance, to have their child picked up after work, or to run them around, or they didn't have time to cook dinner, that you could bring them a meal. So these are ways that you can actually implement and provide something that you're saying to them that really can um, leave a, a helpful impact in their day. Um, you can ask them about their loved one. Sometimes in the workplace we don't know the aunt or uncle that died or their parent who lived in another area. But um, spending some time uh, with that colleague so that they can share about their parent or their sibling that passed away. That can be uh, a way of showing them that you care. Um, ask them to share memories um, about their loved one, or if you have a memory about them, uh, that you remember spending some time with them, share that. They often think that they'll never be able to have any future memories, so sharing a memory that, that you do have with them can be a very impactful. Um, things not to say, you know, um, time heals. We know that time doesn't heal. It's really what you do with that time that can be helpful. And time really is not relevant when you're grieving because time, because grief doesn't have a timetable. Um, people might feel, you know, don't cry. 
you know, people cry uh, and can, it can be helpful, but don't say that to them. That, that may not really be the best thing to say. Um, oftentimes, I hear people saying to me things that people have said that have really been off-putting, saying, I know how you feel. People don't know how they feel. Um, even though we might have gone through the same exact relational loss, we might have both lost our parents, we, don't, we may not know what that relationship was with the colleague. And so, and they may not be grieving in the same way that you grieved. So being very careful of picking the words and, um, and really empathizing, but not uh, comparing. Um, also using religion uh, as a way to interject uh, for people that are grieving can also be off-putting to people. Um, I've heard people say um, to someone, well, God won't give you any more than you can handle. And that can really have someone who's grieving spiral out of control in their emotional state, you know. So we've got to be very careful of what we do say to someone and what we don't say to someone. And um, I just want to uh, mention a couple of quotes um, that I have here. Leo Pasquale, who wrote um, Freddie the Leaf, uh, said, too often we uh, underestimate the power of a touch, a smile, a kind word, a listening ear, an honest compliment, or the smallest act of caring, all of which have the potential to turn a life around. It's overwhelming to consider the continuous opportunities there are to make our love felt. And when we're grieving, it really is about love because we wouldn't feel the grief if we didn't love the person. So just understanding the gentle ways that we can reach out to our colleagues when they're grieving. Another quote that's from Henry Nolan that I think is um, also relates to supporting uh, someone that's grieving, especially in the workplace. When we honestly ask which persons in our lives mean the most to us, we often find that it is those who, instead of giving much advice, solutions, or cures, have chosen rather to share our pain and touch our wounds with a gentle and tender hand. A friend who can be silent with us in the moment of despair or confusion, who can stay with us in our hour of grief and bereavement, we can tolerate not knowing, not curing, not healing, and face with us the reality of our powerlessness makes it clear that whatever happens in the external work, being present to each other is what really matters. So in other words, just saying something, I am so sorry, is the simplest and can be the best response when I really don't know what to say to someone who is grieving. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the management role in supporting a grieving employee, understanding that this is often a tricky position for people to be in. Um, this is important because, you know, grief is part of the human experience, and most people don't have the luxury of taking an extended leave. So as a manager or supervisor, you're very likely to um, experience an employee who is grieving. Most people try to check their troubles at the door when they enter the workplace, but grief isn't an emotion that's so easily regulated. No matter how much work has piled up or how many deadlines you're going to miss, you will have to accommodate your employee's needs. Simply telling him or her to move on or cheer up is likely to leave them even more upset and antagonized, and that's what you want to avoid. So one thing to consider is that, you know, your company's invested a significant amount of time and money in the employee, and you probably will feel better about yourself if you you know, rather than letting someone go, is supporting them as they go through their loss. And what can be helpful is, you know, it's very easy, I think, as a management or a supervisor to feel like you have so many responsibilities on you and a lot of stress. Um, so it can be easy to find yourself focusing on the negative aspects of the situation. Now I have an emotionally unstable team member, you know, uh, someone who's depressed, lower productivity, um, because you're feeling your own stress and pressures. Um, but it's really important in this in this situation to focus on the positive aspects. I think this is the perfect opportunity to show your grieving employee 
as well as his colleagues, because they are watching that he is he or she is valued by you and, and by the company. By respecting what they're going through, creating a supportive environment, that employee is likely to become more engaged with the company than before. We, that's that loyalty that we talked about. In addition, supporting employees in this way will enhance you know, your organization because it shows that you don't take people for granted and instead care deeply about their well-being. So one thing to remember is that not, you know, not all people need the same type of support. And so the most important thing as a manager or a supervisor that you're going to do is ask a lot of questions and ask them frequently. Um, ask your returning employee, would you like me or another person to share any information with the others? If so, what information or details would you like them to know? Do you want to talk about your experience when you return or would you prefer to concentrate on the work? Are you aware of any special needs at this time that, that would be helpful to you? Privacy, reduce, initially reduced work hours, help on catching up with your work. So understand that grief as a process is something that's very up and down. Employee emotions are not yet stable. So again, just to reiterate, it's important to keep asking these questions because the answers may change on a daily basis. Um, make sure that you offer specific help. Um, you know, and, and be very clear about the details of what that looks like. Um, certainly, you know, making yourself aware to talk. And of course, we understand that, you know, there is work to be done. So it may not be the proper time to sit down and have a long conversation, but you can always say, you know, could we talk later? I'm available at three or would you like to have lunch? Um, so it's also important to be able to say what your limits are as an employer and what you can and can't offer, but to be understanding and try to be responsive to the needs of the employee. Listening is probably the most important thing you can do and also remembering anniversaries and holidays people who are grieving You know those anniversaries and holidays are so hard They may have been doing well and in fact you might not even notice their grief at work because they're able to kind of at that point Put it aside, but you know that when those holidays come up, that's it might be a you know a difficult day for them So just acknowledging that um, so you know just really being responsive to whatever that employee's needs are and not to, you know, kind of guess at what they are. Actually ask because, I, like Donna mentioned, you know, it's a very different experience for different people. So what do we do about grief in the workplace when it's actually an employee dies? We have to remember that people we work with closely are like our extended families and when a coworker dies, friends at work are certainly grieving. The manager or human resources representative will have the most accurate information. Making the call to those you supervise prior to arriving at work allow employees the opportunity to begin to process the news and helps to prepare them emotionally before they are going back to the reaching out to the, I mean before they go back to the office. The very first step is to gather information from the employee's family and what happened and what they feel comfortable sharing. Are those, although family members have every right to ask the certain uh, what happened and what they feel comfortable sharing, although these family members have every right to ask that certain details, for instance, the cause of the death, um, remain private, it's also important for the employer to convey that the organization does have an obligation to inform its employees and relay a message uh, in some sort of fashion. Once you have the approval of the family, it's wise to move quickly on internal communication to get the message out there. Think about external communication if the person who died was a public figure or a high-ranking executive in your workplace. Um, and, and in some cases, when it's been somebody where there's been a major stockholders, it's, it's really important how this information about an employee dying gets disseminated. Um, also, be sensitive to the family. Ask for the name of a contact person who could be the one that provides the funeral details for those that want to attend the funeral. Uh, making sure that, not, that you have one spokesperson for your workplace rather than having a lot of different employees calling and contacting, contacting different family members. Um, it's also important that um, employees have time off, uh, that they are able to go to a funeral or a memorial service, um, doing something to acknowledge um, that the death has happened. Uh, also know the company's brief and policies and inform the staff. Um, how can the uh, employee um, support those 
that are affected by the loss. Listen, employees may need to talk about the person who died for weeks and months to come. And when it's time to hire a permanent replacement for the employee, be sensitive. The process can drudge up whole pain and grief. Recognize the anniversary of the death in some way. Um, I know I worked with a, um, a company here in town and they made a decision to put a bench out in their employee um, break area for an employee that died. It's really important that, that the uh, employees have a, a voice in how they want to memorialize or remember their colleague. Along those lines, um, you know, talking about when a coworker dies, some of the, these are just going to be suggestions, but certainly there's a lot more things that can be done. Some things that people do are hold or participate in a fundraiser for a special cause to honor the person or for the family of the deceased. Um, create a book of memories to give to the family. Many people are not aware of the work life of the people they love. That's one thing we hear a lot is, is you know, I, people love hearing these stories and getting cards, sharing memories of the person because they're not things that they might necessarily know about. Um, checking in with the family, stop by the house for short visits, provide a listening ear, offer practical support such as mowing the lawn, carpooling children, meals. Stay in touch with the deceased family, send a card or note to let them know that you've not forgotten them or your coworker. Um, creating a memorial board, you know, which is more of a, a place where coworkers can remember the person. Encourage your coworkers to post messages or memories that remind them of your coworker. Keep a photo card or special item the person kept on his or her desk as a way to remember. Some workplaces conduct a workplace only event, which is a luncheon or office only memorial, where coworkers can acknowledge their unique relationship with the deceased. Um, try to respect the family's confidentiality and avoid gossip about the way the person died. Um, you know, if the deceased family is private about the details, set that example for coworkers. Be supportive, listen, be flexible. What someone needs today might be different tomorrow. So really supporting each other um, and realizing that, you know, your coworkers are, are grieving the loss in all different ways. So we just got a few minutes left, and I was wondering if anybody had any questions. Uh, I know we covered a lot of material today, and I again apologize for the technical difficulties that we had from our end. Yeah, thank you both. I'm glad our connection stabilized, and those were a lot of helpful tips. So if you have any questions for Donna and Laura, just type them into the chat box and try to select all panelists and attendees from the drop-down menu when you do so that everybody can see your questions. So there's one, when you spoke of the style of grieving, is there any type of avoidance grieving? Hmm. Well, that's a good question. Yeah, I mean, certainly um, people People do avoid their grief. Um, I mean, certainly is something, I mean, I'm not exactly sure what the person is asking. I mean, I think what she's referring to or he's referring to is denying or not allowing yourself to grieve. And people, you know, we talk about that being the wrong way to grieve, which is to mask the emotion and the feelings where people may actually um, self-medicate, you know. And so I would say that may be a form of avoidance. Um, avoidance is different than a style where someone might um, actually be grieving, but they really would rather do it in isolation or they're more private about it. So there's a difference between the style and the way someone is actually grieving and then the person that's avoiding the, the symptoms of grief altogether. Uh-huh. That makes sense. Yeah, the styles of grieving made so much sense, but I hadn't ever heard it laid out like that. So that was really helpful. And this also can correlate with um, personality styles. You know, there's been some research done on personalities. And, like, if you're an extrovert, people who tend to be extroverts might really need to and so in many ways, just like the intuitive griever, they need to, re to process, but they need to process the grief verbally, and they really want to be around people. They find comfort by being among people that they feel comfortable with or 
family members or friends, uh, someone who is more of an introvert may actually just withdraw. It doesn't mean that they're not grieving, but they do it in private. They may not feel comfortable with showing emotions, even though the emotions are there. Uh, so it's, it is, uh, can be helpful in the workplace to understand a little bit about if, if the colleague is an, is an extrovert or an introvert. Mm -hmm. It sometimes can be a mixture of both. Yeah, that makes sense. Are there any other questions out there? We'll give people another minute to think. And in the meantime, I just want to invite all of you to the next webinar in the Health and Wellness series. It will be on ending the mental illness stigma, and that's on April 30th from 1 to 2 p.m. And we'll also be sending out these slides and the recording sometime early next week. So. Uh, oh, there's another question. How do you handle a situation where the grieving is taking over the work day and maybe people aren't ready to be back? That's a hard one because I would say that, you know, most people who are grieving would say they're not ready to be back. Um, it's, it's hard to be ready to be back. And so I think it has to be, again, it's about a balance. It depends what perspective you're coming at it from, right? As the employee, there's there's often a lot of anxiety about returning to work and, and people have to decide for themselves what they can handle and they can't. You know, often people, you know, are able to use their sick time or, you know, to take an extended time or to take mental health days. Um, but I think just keeping an open communication and trying to balance the best you can. Obviously, it's a tricky situation because work needs to be done. Um, and there's responsibilities that the organization has. Um, and, you know, it, it certainly is going to impact everybody. Coworkers might feel, you know, a strain with taking, picking up more work. Supervisors might feel a strain with not being able to meet the needs of the organization. So it really has to, I think open communication is the only way to deal with it, knowing it's, it's not going to be, it's going to be an imperfect situation, but with flexibility and communication, you can get through the tough time to come out on the other side. Um, and I think employees have to also just be asking themselves, what do they need and making sure to do their part to take care of, of themselves during this, this difficult time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else out there have a question? So I'm not seeing any other questions. So thank you both for joining us. You're very welcome. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to talk about it, about grief in the workplace. It, I think it's a very important topic. And I don't think enough attention has been given to that and the impact it does have on everyone involved. So thank you so much. And again, sorry about the technical difficulties. Yeah, thank you. And have a good day, everybody.